Today we'll be making chlorine in the solid, liquid, and gas states. I know last video I promised to show you the explosive nitrogen triiodide, but unfortunately it was just too cold outside to dry it to make it explode properly, so I hope that you'll be okay with making a toxic gas as a substitute. To make the chlorine, we'll need hydrochloric acid, or a source of the chlorine, and manganese dioxide to actually react with the hydrochloric acid to release the chlorine from it. For the glassware, we'll need a three-necked boiling flask, an addition funnel to add the hydrochloric acid to the manganese dioxide, which is a bit... there, there it is. <laughs> it's a bit big, so I'll just leave it right there. A vacuum adapter. Two glass stoppers to stop the chlorine gas from getting out when we don't want it to. And a small flask. To turn the chlorine into a liquid, we'll be using a mixture of dry ice and ethanol. Mixing dry ice and ethanol together makes an extremely cold bath that can get down to negative 78 degrees Celsius or negative 108 degrees Fahrenheit, well below the boiling point of chlorine, which is negative 34 degrees Celsius. We'll put the smaller round bottom flask in the beaker with the ethanol and dry ice to collect the chlorine as a liquid. To turn the chlorine into a solid, we'll be using liquid nitrogen. We'll follow the same procedure as with the dry ice ethanol bath, but instead with liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is negative 200 degrees Celsius, or negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Chlorine's melting point is about negative 100 degrees Celsius, so we'll be producing solid chlorine. I'll then try to solidify a small amount of chlorine in a test tube so I can break it open and feel solid chlorine, because I'm curious as to what it feels like. Here we have a diagram of what the reaction is actually going to look like, and the glass we're required for it. So up here we have the addition funnel with the hydrochloric acid, and here we'll be adding the manganese dioxide, and we'll be covering that up afterwards because we don't want the chlorine gas to escape. So that'll direct all the chlorine gas through the vacuum adapter into the small flask, and that's where the chlorine gas will collect. So we'll just use a tube to the vacuum adapter and then shove it in. So we'll be adding the hydrochloric acid very slowly in order to make sure to control the reaction because we don't want to create too much chlorine because that will cause the reaction to go out of control and produce far too much chlorine and far too much heat. So this is the setup that we'll actually be using to make the chlorine. I forgot to mention that we will be using a hot plate and a metal bowl with water in it to help heat the reaction to keep it going faster. Now, I do have to say, don't try this at home. Chlorine gas is an extremely dangerous substance. It was literally used in war. I shouldn't have to say don't do this at home, but some people will try, so I have to say don't do this at home. <laughs> anyway, we'll start by adding the hydrochloric acid up at the top. So I'm going to add about 100 mils, actually no, I'm going to add about 50 mils of hydrochloric acid. Actually, I'll add 100 mils, but we're only going to use 50 to start with. This is just to control the reaction, and we don't want it to get out of control, because it produces some heat and a lot of dangerous chlorine. There's the hydrochloric acid added. Next, we'll be adding the manganese dioxide. This is what will react with the hydrochloric acid to actually produce the chlorine gas that'll go through this tube that you see here into that small bottle. And I have the paper towel behind the small bottle, so you can actually see it start to turn yellow when the reaction occurs. So I'm not going to put a whole lot of manganese dioxide. That was probably a little bit too much, but that should be good. I'm not going to put an insane amount in there. Again, we don't want the reaction to go out of control. Make sure to put a stopper on it. I once forgot the stopper with this very same reaction, which is why you can see a slight bit of reactant right there, because I didn't bother cleaning the addition funnel because it didn't really matter in this case, it was being used for the exact same thing. So we're just gonna put the hot plate to full to heat up the water as much as possible. Now this will take a while, but I'm gonna heat it up to about 50 degrees to make the reaction go a little bit quicker than it otherwise would. 
So now we're actually going to start the reaction. Now that the water is at about 50 degrees Celsius, I would have normally heated up more, but I was just simply grinding out of daylight because water takes a long time to heat up, and I kind of started this later in the day. So we're adding the hydrochloric acid slowly to make sure that the reaction doesn't go out of control. But you can see by the slight yellow color that chlorine gas is being created there. Now, this will take a while, mostly because I don't have a stir bar in there and also not a lot of heat. So I didn't put a stir bar in there because it just simply wouldn't work through the metal bowl. The magnets just weren't working through that. So the chlorine gas will build up in the bigger flask that you see there and then slowly move over to the smaller flask. Now, you will see a lot more chlorine build up in the bigger flask just simply because when it goes to the smaller flask, it's not a closed container because I don't want to accidentally create a chlorine bomb as that would be bad. So you will see a lot more chlorine be created in the bigger flask than in the smaller flask, but there will still be some in the smaller flask. Now, make sure to not try this at home. Chlorine gas was used in war, so please don't try this. This is very dangerous. Uh, I would not recommend this at all unless you really do know what you're doing, which I would assume you most likely don't. <laughs> so now that the reaction has gone on for a while, I'm going to shut off the hot plate to slow the reaction down. Now it will take a while for the water to cool down, but as you can see there, we're starting to produce a little bit of chlorine by that slight yellow color in the small tube. Most of it does escape, which is why we'll be making the liquid chlorine next to actually capture much more of it. But you can see all the chlorine in that big flask there that is collected. So to make the liquid chlorine, we'll start off with the same procedure as before. We'll add the manganese dioxide into the flask. We'll be adding more this time just to make sure that we produce enough chlorine to actually be able to see the liquid, since liquid is much more dense than the gas. I make sure to get as much out of the funnel as possible by shaking it and hitting against the flask to make sure that all the manganese dioxide comes out. I then put the stopper back on the flask and then start adding the hydrochloric acid. This time we'll be adding about 200 mils of hydrochloric acid. Again, this is just to create more chlorine so we can actually collect more of it as a liquid. Again, I would like to stress at this point, this is a lot of chlorine that's necessary to make it into a liquid and especially a solid, so please do not try this at home. This is very dangerous. At this point, we'll start heating up the hot plate. Now, I did pre-warm the water ahead of time just so it went faster, because otherwise we'd be waiting forever for the water to heat up. So we'll now start making the ethanol bath. So I added about 500 mils of the ethanol to the 1000 milliliter beaker. I'll lower the small flask into the ethanol and then add dry ice to the ethanol. What this does is it causes the ethanol to evaporate very quickly, which is an endothermic process. This will cool down the beaker to about negative 70 degrees Celsius. You can see I'm having trouble getting the flask in the beaker since I filled up the beaker a little bit too much before dipping the flask in there, but that's fine, I can always just lift up the flask. After finally getting the flask in the beaker itself, it's time to add the dry ice now, so the dry ice will actually cool the whole system. I'll add the dry ice to the ethanol very slowly in small pieces. This is because if you add too much at once, it'll start to spill over due to the bubbling. As you can see there, the bubbling is quite violent, so you don't want to add too much, otherwise it'll just start to spill over everywhere and get all over the lab table, which actually happened to me a tiny bit another time. We'll keep adding the dry ice for a little bit without actually starting the chlorine production, just to allow the system to cool down a little bit before we start making the chlorine. Now that the beaker has cooled down quite a bit, we can actually start the reaction by adding the hydrochloric acid to the manganese dioxide. Again, what's happening is the manganese dioxide is tearing that chlorine off the hydrochloric acid to create the chlorine gas. The chlorine gas will then go through the tube into the small flask, whereupon it'll be cooled to the point where it can actually start to condense into a liquid. Now this is what we'll be seeing when we actually take the flask out of that cold beaker.
So now that the reaction has gone on for a while, we can actually see the liquid chlorine starting to condense at the bottom of that flask. I'll take that flask out of the beaker to show you the actual liquid chlorine itself. So I'll just raise up the flask, and there you can see the liquid chlorine at the bottom. You can see it move when I swish it around, and it is indeed liquid chlorine, and you have that nicely yellow chlorine color in it. I just thought this was cool. You can actually see the chlorine boiling here off that flask. Now we'll begin making the solid chlorine. This time, instead of a small flask, we'll be using a large test tube instead. This is so we can actually get the test tube as far down into the liquid nitrogen as possible to make sure that the chlorine freezes properly. So we'll then fill up the flask with liquid nitrogen and then pour it into the small beaker. You can see that this produces a lot of noise due to the liquid nitrogen boiling off. Now that the chlorine has been sitting in the liquid nitrogen for about two minutes at this point, we'll take it out and see how it looks. I'll raise the test tube out of the liquid nitrogen using the ring stand and take the hose out. I'll then unclamp the test tubes, so then you can actually see the solid chlorine. Unfortunately, you can see it's still a liquid in there, so it looks like it needs a little bit more time back in the liquid nitrogen, but on most of it you can see around the edges is solid. You can't really see it very well due to the ice being formed on the side and also how frosty it is. I'm going to try to pour out some of the liquid so you can actually see it on the paper towel and how quickly it evaporates. I'll also try to get some of the solid out by shaking it, but I don't think that it'll be very likely that we'll get any of the solid stuff stuck to the sides out. But you can see there on the paper towel there is a little bit of chlorine that you can see in the yellow, and already it is starting to disappear. You can look in there and see there's still a tiny bit of solid chlorine left in there that you can see by the yellow color, but it looks like it needs more time than liquid nitrogen. So I'll put it back in, create some more chlorine, and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Now that it's been a little bit longer, we can actually take the test tube out again and see the solid chlorine. This time we'll see a little bit more solid chlorine, as you can tell by the more yellowish color. You can also see some of the chlorine is in the tube, and it'll slowly start to evaporate. I'm going to try to break the test tube open to actually touch the solid chlorine, but as you'll see in a second, it did not end up too well and I wasn't able to break it open, but you can see me trying really hard. So I had to give up my dream on touching solid chlorine, but it was still fun making it and seeing it. For a second I thought I had actually managed to break the test tube, but unfortunately it was just the paper towel gripping. Since you weren't able to see the chlorine in the test tube very well, I'll show you some pictures that I took of me doing it in a larger bottle. Now I know it says $8, but don't worry, it is borosilicate and it is a proper lab bottle. So here's what's actually happening. The hydrochloric acid is reacting with the manganese dioxide. So the manganese dioxide is pulling the chlorine off the hydrochloric acid to create manganese chloride. And this also produces excess chlorine, which is released as a gas, which we saw in the flask. 
Now the excess hydrogen from the reaction reacts with the oxygen to form H2O, also known as water. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. The next video will be out hopefully sooner than this one was. 